and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle-Earth painting tutorial. After a bit of a holiday break, it's time to get back on the bandwagon and with an appropriately Christmassy model. Merry, Merry Christmas. I start with the yellow waistcoat using snake bite leather or Baylor Brown as a base coat. You don't need loads, that would be a waistcoat. Badumptish. But it is just to help the yellow build up a bit easier, so start with that brown. Then, with Iandan Darkson, get crack a on that wee jacket. Just so you know, the paints are listed with their current versions in the description below the video. And it's also worth noting, this is the Merry from the Breaking of the Fellowship box set, which I got on Made to Order a while back. But if you can get your hands on any metal versions on eBay, they're the ones you want for sure, not the plastic one from the Fellowship box set currently available. Now, with Scorched Brown or Rhinox Hide, I start off painting his trousers so he's prepared for battle. The Pelennor is a scary place for a hobbit unprepared for war. We don't want any stains to show up. Then, with Death World Forest, I start work on his blazer. I decided I wanted to highlight it up to a sort of camo style green, so instead of using the usual base coat of dark green and work that up, I decided to start this way and shade it, but we'll see how that works out later. With dark flesh, I begin building up highlights on what I've decided are leathery brown trousers. Imagine Merry wearing brown leather cowboy pants. Ace. With Stegadon Scale Green, I begin work on the Elven Cloak. If you check out my other tutorial that's currently uploaded from the Fellowship, I show a different way of painting the Elven Cloak with Legolas, but I decided to simplify it on this one because I felt initially it was a bit overcomplicated, and as ever, I was painting to a deadline when I was filming this. Then, moving back to that blazer, we go for a green wash. I've always loved the currently called contrast style of painting with washes. I did it ages ago, before contrast of course. I'm a trail blazer. See, see what I did there? Uh, with white clump flesh shade, I wash the yellow waistcoat just to pack out some of those details. Then, mixing together Fenris Grey and Stegadon Scale Green, I begin highlighting the Elven Cloak. Some say to water it down plenty and to do two layers and all that sort of stuff, but I go for a slightly less watered down mix and just highlight carefully once, and then neaten up with washes later. I'm a messy painter. Doesn't look too bad, that cloak, eh? What, you, you can't see it yet? Must be because it's Elven. Oh. Done in the wrong order, but now I wash the cloak green, and I should have done that earlier when I was washing the blazer as well, but oh well. While that's drying, I crack on with a skin using a slightly thinned version of Talon Flesh. In case you're not sure on the conversions, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, the new paints to old ones that I use, uh, check out the description under the video. I list the current GW versions of what I'm using. Again, my lack of careful planning comes in, and I should have used the flesh shade on the skin and the jacket at the same stage, but inefficiency is my middle name. It's the way I've always enjoyed painting, problem solving basically, and also just not worrying about it too much. There's far too much in life to worry about concerning yourself obsessively with the order in which you paint a toy soldier. Then again, showing massive inefficiency, I paint the hair with snake bite leather despite using it earlier. This is what happens when you paint a hobbit in under an hour, excluding drying time. I do love opening a colour up that's so often neglected. Yellow is one of mine, which is very rarely used. I must paint some Harad or something with it at some point. Maybe that's, I'll add that to the to-do list. Anyway, sunburst yellow forms the highlight on the waistcoat. Notice I'm not worrying about the buttons. We'll detail them on later. I mix a bit of bleach bone into the yellow and dry brush the hair with that. I don't want it to be too bright a yellow, but Merry is blonde, and the way, his, uh, way the bone kind of tones it down just enough uh, makes it look about right. And using the same colour, I do a few tiny highlights on the very raised surface of the waistcoat as well. 
Now to go as green as Hobbiton's finest public house, I use scorpion green and snot green mixed together to begin highlighting. You can see that it immediately brings that brightness we've so far been missing from our lovely hobbity hero. I love painting hobbits for this reason. Cartoony works, but so does rustic and drab if you really want it to. They're just so full of character and charm. And, and obviously I've not decided kind of halfway through the process to not go with the camo green style. It just doesn't suit Mary really, does it? Now you can see, and I'm also not using super precise strokes. The sleeves are actually very detailed and full of depth. And uh, so I sort of use a precision dry brushing technique, which works really well. Now I've brightened it up so much, I just couldn't help but wonder whether I went too far. So to take the edge off, I put another wash of that green on. While we're washing the jacket, we may as well give the Hobbit himself a bathe. So right clump flesh shade goes on the skin and the waistcoat again, just to add another bit more depth. I don't think you put enough on earlier on. With chainmail, I do a very basic layer on the sword. Literally nothing too fancy because his dagger is nothing fancy after all. And with black, I pick out the buttons on his jackets. Then back to the cloak again for a final grey highlight with Fenris Grey. This time well and truly edge highlighting, leaving a fair amount of the previous colours showing through. Now just quickly neaten up that yellow before bringing Mary's face back to life with Talon flesh after those washes earlier. Then with his eyes, with a view to highlight his with Crucially, a view to highlight his skin and tidy up the eyes at the same time, I paint with black. Uh, but bloody eyes, they're so fiddly, so I tidy the damn things up with talon flesh before going in to dot them in with some white. And then more tidying up there. Then, doing something I don't often do, with dark flesh I try to pick out the details on his face, particularly the lips, and it sort of, only sort of works. With silver, I paint the buttons to give his waistcoat a bit of New Year's Eve sparkle. Then with elf flesh, I finish off the face by just picking out the details on cheekbones and the brow of his face and so on. I decided afterwards that I wanted to add some rosy cheeks just by mixing a bit of red with some elf flesh and using a watered down layer just kind of blobbed in, in the center of his cheeks. I think it really works, especially for these running hobbits that I have. So there you have it, a belated Merry Christmas from me and a Merry too. If you like the video, do subscribe for more and I've left the list of paints below in this uh, description. And if you want to support the channel, consider joining my Patreon to encourage the kind of content you'd like from me. The link's down there as well. And of course, more gaming content and more tutorials should be on the way very, very soon. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.